Start and expand a business in New York City can be a challenging task. That's why we created New York City Business Express. It's a free one-stop website where business owners can access the information they need to open up shop. You can apply online for many permits, settle outstanding fines, and find incentives to lower the cost of doing business. Visit nyc.gov or call 311 and ask for NYC Business Express. Hi, I'm Seth Diamond, Commissioner of New York City's Department of Homeless Services. Homeless Services can connect you or someone you know who is at risk of homelessness to the DHS Home Base Program at one stop for homelessness prevention or one of our free law offices. We have over 30 service centers located in the five boroughs. To learn more about community-based prevention services that can help New Yorkers prevent eviction and avoid shelter, call 311 or visit nyc.gov. I'm Kate Levin, Commissioner of the Department of Cultural Affairs. New York City is the creative capital of the world. Throughout the five boroughs, residents and visitors benefit from an extraordinary cultural community that includes more than 700 theater and dance companies, 650 galleries and museums, 96 orchestras, 24 performing arts centers, five zoos, four botanic gardens, and one aquarium. So take in an exhibition, see a performance, or visit a historic site. There's something for everyone, and it's all just around the corner. Hola, yo soy Adrienne Bailón. Tener una identificación oficial puede ser clave para tu éxito. ¿Quieres abrir una cuenta bancaria? ¿Solicitar un trabajo? Vas a necesitar una identificación oficial para hacer cualquiera de estas cosas. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this afternoon, it's been my honor and pleasure to welcome to New York the mayor of another one of the world's leading cities, the executive mayor of Johannesburg, South Africa, the Honorable pa Parks Tau. Major Tau is also a member of the steering committee of the C40 Cities Climate Leadership Group. Uh, C40 brings many of the world's major cities together to address the challenges that we all face in creating a more environmentally friendly future for our cities and in dealing with the urgent consequences of climate change. I've been privileged to chair C40 since November 2010, and since then C40's credibility and stature have grown significantly, establishing it as one of the leading international climate change organizations. And today I'm pleased to announce that Mayor Tao and the city of Johannesburg will host the next C40 Cities Major Mayor's Summit. It will take place over three days in February of 2014. Uh, at what is incidentally the 20th anniversary of the end of apartheid in South Africa. Uh, and this me meeting will give city leaders, climate change scientists, journalists, and others from around the world an opportunity to exchange ideas and to see what Mayor Tao is doing to make Johannesburg a more sustainable city and also help the people of the city mark this 20th year anniversary of a great transition to a multiracial democracy. And I will be in Johannesburg to cheer on the work of the mayor, who will have been selected to succeed me as C40's chair. Like New York and like the more than 60 other cities that make up C40, Johannesburg and, and Mayor Tao are committed to addressing climate change through vigorous local actions. Under Mayor Tao's leadership, Johannesburg has developed a long-term growth and development strategy called Joburg 2040. And unlike, in fact, like New York City's own Plan YC, Joburg 2040 sets out a strategy for improving that city's livability and environmental sustainability. It proposes to shrink Johannesburg's carbon footprint even as the city's population and economy continues to grow. Uh, these issues are of paramount importance to all of the C40 cities, especially those like Johannesburg, that are in developing nations and who are experiencing rapid, rapid population and economic growth. And we expect those concerns to be at the top of the agenda in Johannesburg next February. As an organization, C40, as you know, encourages collaboration among cities from all parts of the world. And we believe cities have an obligation to share best practices and work together to innovate and improve our best ideas. We also believe that cities have an obligation to lead. Cities are where the majority of people on Earth now live, and the world's urban population continues to grow at a very rapid pace. Uh, 
Cities account for two-thirds of the world's energy usage. Cities generate more than 70 percent of the greenhouse gases that are implicated in climate change. And cities are especially vulnerable to the extreme weather events like Hurricane Sandy that climate change intensifies. Cities also are global centers of commerce, communications, and culture. And on this rapidly urbanizing planet, what cities do increasingly sets the agenda and determines the future for people everywhere. So it's very encouraging that cities around the world, particularly C40 cities, are leading the change in combating the, in the imp impacts of global climate change. And even as national governments and international bodies have faltered in the face of this challenge, C40 cities are showing that when we act individually, uh, we have an impact globally. For example, C40 formed in 2005. Uh, since then, our members have implemented more than 5,000 separate actions designed to shrink their carbon footprints. These measures reduce annual greenhouse gas emissions by some 248 million tons a year by 2020 and by as much as 1.3 billion tons a year by 2030. Let me just put that in perspective. That means that by 2030, the single year reduction of greenhouse gases by C40 cities could cancel out emissions equal to those of the nations of Mexico and Canada combined. So these results really are meaningful. And as C40 chair, I'm confident we can do even more. The Johannesburg Summit, the fifth C40 has held, will help chart the course of the world's leading cities in years to come. C40's last summit in Sao Paulo in June of 2011 was historic in many ways. As, uh, it, as it, at it, we took steps to establish a common global metric for measuring the carbon emissions that cities produce. We also announced an important partnership with the World Bank that will make it easier for the world's cities to finance green projects. And I'm sure that the 2014 summit will be just as productive. So with that, let me turn the floor over to Mayor Tao. He is one of the great young mayors in this world, and uh, the future of our planet really is in the hands of uh, his generation more so than mine. So um, uh, I will be uh, sitting on the sidelines eventually, feet up, retired, breathing clean air, drinking clean water, being able to get around all because of you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Mayor Plumberg. As the, now let me start by saying good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as a city of Johannesburg, we're proud and honored to have been selected as the next host city of the C40 Cities for Climate Change Summit. We believe that this summit gives us the opportunity not just to continue positioning ourselves as a city that has the capacity to host major events, but also as an active participant in initiatives around climate change. As the city of Johannesburg, we have been members of the C40 steering committee since its inception, and uh, our activities have related to ensuring that we do not just undertake initiatives by ourselves as a city, but undertake initiatives together with partner municipalities throughout the world, saying how do we take best practice from other cities, and how do we work with other cities to ensure that we're able to address the challenges of climate change. This also gives us the opportunity to continue in the arena of advocacy, advocacy for change, particularly in the multilateral negotiations with regards to the role of states in supporting, one, in terms of ensuring that states are able to address the challenges of uh, climate change, but also that they support local government in the efforts that local government undertakes uh, as it implements programs that address climate change. These are programs related to, literally, as we say, uh, in local government, this is where the rubber hits the tar. And this literally happens in local government because we have to deal with uh, the provision of public transport, the provision of electricity, and other services that impact on climate change. And it is through direct efforts by local government that we have witnessed through C40 uh, and other initiatives the ability of local government to impact on climate change in a meaningful way, as indicated by Mayor Bloomberg. 
We are here really to say, as we announce uh, Joburg as the next city to host the uh, summit, that we would be welcoming all the mayors and major players in local government and in cities in relation to climate change uh, and looking forward to making further commitments that we can collectively make as local government leaders to address the problems that afflict the world in relation to climate change through both mitigation and adaptation initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'd be uh, happy to take a question or two if anybody has any, sir. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Sherman Bryce, from SABC News, South Africa. What advice would you give before you retire into the shadows a city like Johannesburg that has different priorities to a city like New York, for example, you know, where you see the great divide between rich and poor, and where climate change, energy efficiency, and, and those issues are perhaps arguably a concern for more, more for those that, that can afford to care? Well, C40 focuses on climate change, but I would argue all big cities have very similar kinds of problems. Um, we have uh, the uh, uh, we're responsible for keeping crime down. We're responsible for providing a good education. We're responsible for attracting businesses, uh, making the cities uh, welcoming in terms of parks and cultural institutions and clean streets. We're responsible in, for transportation. And so I would think that most of these cities uh, have more in common rather than less particularly to New York. Uh, you've got to remember that New York's population is very diverse. Forty percent of the people who live in New York City were born outside of America. And so, and we have, you know, we had 52 million tourists last year. So the number of people from South Africa that come here every year is really substantial. And so there's more of a dialogue. What's also true is that in New York, we live as a mixture rather than a mosaic. So when you go down the steps on the subway, you're very likely to have a very diverse group of people. They look different, dress different, sound different, act different, but you sort of all get used to each other. And I think that's one of the reasons for low crime here and uh, very good relations between ethnic and racial groups and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, all these cities, he's trying to get tourists coming to Johannesburg, I'm trying to get tourists coming to New York. In some senses, we're in competition, but since people will go not to the same place for the vacation every year, there's plenty of business to go around. And if he can learn something from us about how we do, or we can learn something from him, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to it. I've never been to South Africa, but I have lots of friends that are from South Africa and friends who vacation in South Africa. Part of my family's done that. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can learn. We're not going to have the same natural resources, for example, they do. Um, you know, they, the same kind of... But th there's so many things in common that the big cities that are well-led and open to ideas from other cities really have a lot to get out of an organization like C40. And if you take a look in our Plan YC, we've adopted a lot of things that other cities have done. You know, whether it's in transportation or how you handle waste or things like that. So there's a lot more in common. Yes, miss. Do you have particular uh, policy goals about what, what you want to see come out of this summit? Well, the uh, C40 has the policy goals of uh, ensuring more cooperation, uh, having common standards so that we can measure our progress one versus another, uh, and getting an, uh, building relationships because in two or three days, you get a limited amount of information and uh, contacts, but longer term, you want to be able to pick up the phone and, you know, I can call Parks and say, hey, you know, it's Mike, and what are you doing about this? And we have this issue of, you know, the, the, in the South African community out in Queens, they're trying to hold this kind of an event. What does it mean? What should we do? How should we uh, make the city more hospitable and understand what their needs are? So, sir. One for the sure. So what is the, the level of consciousness in Johannesburg when it comes to climate change? Well, there are different levels of consciousness. I mean, we hosted, as you know, COP17 uh, last year. That increased levels of consciousness across the board in South Africa and in Johannesburg in particular. Uh, there are practical issues that we confront that has made uh, people of Johannesburg realize that climate change is real. We have witnessed increased intensity in 
in rain and an increase in the rainy season in Johannesburg over the past decade. And the impact has been increased flash floods uh, and, of course, the incapacity of uh, our stormwater system to attenuate the levels of stormwater that we currently are facing. That requires increased public investment, but it also requires a consciousness amongst the people of Johannesburg to realize that, in fact, this is as a result of climate change and that we need to intervene through adaptation and mitigation, uh, look at measures of how we adapt in our households and how we adapt in the municipal environment, uh, but also how we invest in infrastructure to begin responding to these challenges. But it's also about uh, the sort of public investment decisions that are being made. Uh, as the city of Johannesburg, we have initiated the uh, process of, uh, of uh, landfill to energy initiatives. Uh, so it's about looking at waste in a fundamentally different way and say, how do we ensure that waste becomes a resource in the city of Johannesburg? We're currently flaring the waste, but going forward, we have just concluded a study on using uh, compressed natural gas to uh, power our, bus, our municipal bus system. Uh, we should be able to the study has just been finalized, and we should be able to look at how we implement this initiative. So it's not just consciousness from the side of the municipality, but it's also consciousness on the side of the people of Johannesburg that has increased quite significantly. Yes. Anything else? Um, looking forward to this. Um, can't wait. Well, I'm not rushing to get through my life or finish this term, but uh, it's something to look forward to in... Uh, when I'm uh, finished uh, as being mayor, and uh, it will be a pleasure to uh, uh, see the progress that we've made. And I just wanted to thank you and uh, tell you that the world is looking forward to coming to one of the great cities uh, with one of the great mayors. And thank you for your hospitality, and thank you for having us. Thank you very much, and we're looking forward to hosting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.